which is deadly for the, the performance. So, the, um, I don't think John's thinking about the regular sound system in the hall. There is a sound system built into the hall, and in the vertical columns that go up here and on either side, uh, and the wall of the proscenium, not the actual proscenium wall, but the big beige wall of the theater, those two sets of walls are filled with speakers. So when we do, we have those on, turned on for just vocal reinforcement. When we have Broadway shows come in here, there are Bombay doors that open on either end, and a full set of speaker arrays come down from above and uh, amplify in here. And that's, they're quite a huge mass of speakers. What you generally find is that we get lots of complaints about that type of sound. And you've heard the show in here. Because this theater doesn't really want to be amplified. This theater wants to be, and all shows that come in here tend to push it a little bit. So it sounds very loud and like a rock band in here, and people complain all the time. It doesn't need much. And then also, it's, it's odd too, if you do it wrong with the wrong set of delays on the amplification, then you can actually sit in these rows with a speaker here on stage, and not one word is intelligible on the, the thing. It just, it just starts to wreak havoc with electronic sound. Uh, it also wreaks havoc with um, <laughs> sounds. Uh, you saw some of the Control moving lights. The, uh, system out here has probably a dozen or so controlled lights. You can actually can see one on either side. They're rather large and they're pointed down right as you go up these steps. Hanging. And if any of you are sitting underneath there, I apologize. Um, it's part of the design of the designers are using nowadays. Um, does the work of, you know, 10, 15 lights in one light. The problem being is they're motorized. So they will tend to, might as well just say it out loud since it was written in the paper. Uh, one of them stuck, and it was making a horrid humming noise. And we had lots of yelling backstage going, you couldn't hear it backstage at all. So we came out into the house thinking it was that. So we started on that side, fourth level, listening. And the problem with the house, Acoustically Perfect, is that sounded like it was coming from everywhere. And there was one instrument on the third level pointed toward the wall. So we figured that must be it. We haven't focused too many lights toward the wall. So we went over there and indeed what had happened it was a cable had worked its way down. And when the instrument went this way, that cable acted like a rope. And it kept it from moving. So it kept trying to push itself. The motor kept trying to go. And the cable was holding it. So for a good, I'd say, well, it seemed, according to the reviewer, like, 45 minutes, but really I think closer to about 10 hours, and it caught, uh, it caught some audio from the singer and that, that caused some problems, so we had to run quickly find out. And, uh, technology is a wonderful thing when it works, but quite often, um, you know, when you put this much of it in a house, uh, and at this quick of a pace, this house opened on October 23rd was our opening day at Capella. We opened with a uh, acoustic concert before then, and uh, and um, who else was singing? I can't remember. Deborah Voigt. De Deborah Voigt was singing. Others to sort of christen the house. The Broadway gala came in with Kristen Chenoweth, uh, Patty Lapone opened the house, but then officially the opera opened on October 23rd with I, what I understand was one of Mr. Winters. I guess that's John finishing. Oh, he got applause. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll just tell him you wrote me checks when you left. He <laughs> donated $42 million to this hall, and he never lived to see it open. Um, he, I believe, before I got here, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, I believe. And they did a concert for Mr. Winston and his wife, who was quite in Vietnam, now, but was here last week. And, mm -hmm. and, and they did a they did a concert for him on the foundation of the um, the building. He was poor. I saw pictures of it. It is now reviewed as acoustically one of the finest halls yeah. in the nation. Come on in, and some of the things like the acoustician Bob Esser out of a thing called Sound G you know Bob's company in London. Sound space design. Sound space yeah. design. Bob Bob was with the uh, he was with uh, uh, Johnson. Uh, when they did the Myers. He was one of the design team, and then he was stolen away by a company in England, 
uh, and uh, then he started in England. And then he did Toronto, which just opened three years ago, and uh, this is his next major theater. I noticed they gave you a plot, so I wanted to point out they all wrote donations when I came. Oh. <laughs> Don't feel any pressure, okay? <laughs> if you want something named after you, there are lots of things still to be oh, named. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where was lots the, of things to be named. Where was the captain singing from? The captain of the Rachel? Right on that, that box. Per, that box there. We tried him there. We yeah. tried him there. We tried him sound. I couldn't tell. From, so, and, uh, but it was, he was just bound from the sound off that wall. Yeah, yeah. he was somewhere over here. Yeah, I, know, I, I couldn't tell. Yeah. Jake Jenk was, Jenk was very, very worried about that. Yeah. Yeah. That place, place. You know, he was going to do it. Yeah. It was really pretty amazing to have a living composer. Yeah. And the librettist here for every rehearsal and uh, staging rehearsals, yeah. and they would go, oh, well, maybe uh, you know it'll sound better from here. So we'll do this, we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it was a uh, composer, librettist. One of the most difficult to put on production-wise, but one of the most pleasant experiences. They were just Jay Keggy, everybody was Ben Hefner probably one of the kindest singers I've ever met, and I don't think he ever once complained about having his leg tucked oh. here, not only tucked up, then put with a sling and pulled back so it wasn't sticking out from his coat, which put him that way. He complained a little bit about this, but as if we sent him to physical therapist a couple times to have it worked on. So. But never, I mean, put him on a, he's a big gentleman, put him on a big leg, on a race and have him sing. There's not much more you can do to somebody. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we're going to look to you 30 feet above, 20 feet above the stage. Right. Yeah, you had asked about the, about the projections, where they came from. The, the, see the Connor Mini? And they have to go, they have to go back. They'll come, they'll come out of there tonight. Uh, and then before the end of the evening, that will be gone. We have to send them back. They're uh, very, very... Uh, Large and uh, very precious. They're, they're measuring all the cues now, the trim heights to send off to the other company. We didn't ever have time. We were working right up until an hour, two hours before. So now they're measuring all the various cues so they can send that information. Right there. They say, okay, at this, at this point, this is where the bottom end of the scale should be. Now, our, because now the height of our uh, uh, our grid up on top is eight, what, 88 feet, 87 foot six, something like that. And uh, but somebody else may have 120 feet. So in order to get the the correct height, they would measure it from the bottom, and then uh, the, then they would fly it at whatever height that uh, that that would that that would be. And they got to figure all that out, and then we just send them that data. That's uh, that was very interesting. What they used for the for the sail, they, they used voile. So that you could see through it, mm -hmm. and so the singers could see back through it, uh, because it was so difficult to see the uh, the conductor. Uh, and uh, so even even with all of our mo television monitors and everything else, it was just a stinker to see because of all these lights. There's a lot of lights up there coming from the sides and the front and, and, and overhead.